video should be sponsored by Bondo. It just gets worse. Welcome back to Boring Build Friday. Today's rebuild is a 2006 Lexus RX 330 all-wheel drive. Now, it's not even really a rebuild. It's more of a re-rebuild. Somebody's been here before, so we need to fix what they didn't do right or what they didn't do at all. So we're going to do that. But that's actually not why I'm making this video. This video is being made because there's actually a lot to learn about this car. We're going to blow away a few myths and piss off some people. So stay tuned. So let's start with the fact that this is not a sponsored video. And it's also not a video bashing vehicle history report providers because their reports are only as good as the information that is supplied to them. The problem lies with the people that put too much faith in those vehicle history reports. So we're going to show you the report on this car and what it says, and then we'll show you what actually happened. We're also going to upset some people that claim to be experts and tell you that a salvage title is only on totaled vehicles. This vehicle was never totaled. The only reason it has a salvage title is it was abandoned in a tow yard. So I'll explain how it got its salvage title and you can determine if it really deserves it to be grouped in with all the other cars that have salvage titles and are actually rebuilt. First, a little bit about the car. So like I said, it's a 2006 Lexus RX 330 all-wheel drive. That's got 163,000 miles on it, but for Lexus, that's pretty new. It's a lot higher miles than I usually buy, but Toyotas last forever. If the price was right, I end up with it. And it didn't need much work. Honestly, a lot of car dealers would throw this up. It's frontline ready. I, on the other hand, don't like to sell cars that people are going to have to put money into. So we're going to do a timing belt on it, we're going to do brakes, and we're going to fix everything else on the other side that's really bugging me. So let's see what the Fox had to say about this car. Well, it's got two owners. One of them is me. So when I purchased it, it was a one owner vehicle. Or was it? So in 05, it was purchased brand new with 11 miles on it. It was registered. It had a lien on it. The owner moved in 07. It was registered in 8, 9, passed its emissions test in 2010, had 74,000 miles on it at the time. Renewed the registration, renewed the registration in 11. In 2012, they took it to Midas, just under 98,000 miles on it, and they had a brake job done on it. In 12, at 102,000 miles, it passed another emissions test. They got some plates on it, and it had an oil change. Repaired a tire in 2013. The vehicle was washed and detailed in 2013. They got their plates for 2013, and then in 14, they had the tires replaced, the electrical system checked, tires bounced, and battery replaced. At 126,000 miles, they passed an emissions test. They got their plates. Then in 2015, they had an oil change, antifreeze was flushed, and that had 131,000 miles on it. Then they got their license plates in 2015 and 16. They had the oil changed, the fuel system was clean, transmission fluid was changed. Then they passed their emissions test in 16 got their plates and headed in for another oil change. Got the differential flushed, transfer case flushed, and the vehicle went to an auction with 142,000 miles on it in 2016. Then it was serviced at Larry Roche and the vehicle was sold. Then, and this one is very interesting, in May of 2018, it was involved in an accident in the front end. I happen to know that on this date in 2018, it was parked in a storage lot. So. How it got in an accident, I don't know. It says it was hit in the front end. The front end has been worked on. Maybe the dates are off, I don't know. But it wasn't bad. It said the airbags didn't deploy, and it was at front impact. Then I bought it. That's where the vehicle purchase came from. That was me, back in 2018. I've had it for two years. Because I purchased it from a tow yard that had towed it in, it had to have a salvage title. Now how this works, is the tow yard needs to get rid of the car so they get what is called a certificate of purchase from the police department. That certificate of purchase can only be turned into a salvage title here in Illinois. So then it has a salvage title even if it was towed in because it was out of gas or tire was flat or whatever. This one was actually towed in because the people got arrested for driving with a license plate that was actually just a picture of a license plate. Then they never came to pick it up. I don't know why. Seems like a pretty nice vehicle. I would have picked it up, but they didn't. So 
I ended up with it. Because it had the salvage title, it had to be rebuilt, which in this case was basically just running it through the safety test and then the mailing and the paperwork because there were no parts to change. Now, I have had it for two years. I used it for a little car running around town and now it's time to get rid of it. So we're gonna fix it all up before we sell it. And that's the end of our history report. So now let's figure out exactly what happened and why the fox lied to me. So let's start with the big one. Remember the fox said this car had been in one accident, hitting the front end, airbags never deployed. Okay, well. A gallon of Bondo covering up some horrible bodywork in the left rear door has determined that was a lie. If that wasn't bad enough, we also have a disappearing body line here. So I assume this is all Bondo in here. Again, not the front of the vehicle. So the Fox has failed me. You'll also remember that in the report for the front end accident, no airbags had deployed. Well, an airbag light a curtain airbag that's stuffed back up in here and a tear in the headliner has determined that was a lie. Now you'll also remember the history report said that there were two owners, one of which was me, makes this a one owner vehicle. Well, I searched through the glove box, finding some of the old paperwork, determined that was a lie. It's actually been in multiple dealers' names and they drove it. Put a few thousand miles on it, actually about 20,000 miles on it. So I call that an owner. Maybe you don't, but they drove it, they paid for it, that's an owner. And nothing was reported during that time. So there's 20,000 miles unaccounted for. I've only put a few hundred miles on it since I've had it, which is why it's time for it to go. Now, like I said, I'm not trying to bash vehicle history report providers because they do have their use. It's a tool, but they do have the fine print and you need to read it. Don't rely on it solely. Physical inspections are always the best when you're buying a vehicle. And just because something has a salvage title, you don't need to worry about it all the time. Have it inspected, that's the best way to tell. So up until the salvage title, this was actually a pretty good report. It was serviced regularly at the dealers and places that reported to Carfax, and it hadn't been in any accidents, except for that one questionable one. Usually when they're listed, They'll tell you where the source came from. That was listed without a source. It's kind of suspicious. And I know where it was at the time that they'd supposedly gotten an accident. And it didn't get in an accident. But it does have work up in the front bumper. It looks like, I don't know, maybe bumped into somebody at a stoplight. No big deal. They just painted it. They didn't do a very good job, but they painted it. So I'll get off my soapbox. I'm done talking about the pitfalls of relying too heavily on the vehicle history reports. So now it's time to do some work. We're gonna replace the curtain airbag that deployed when it was hitting the side over there. We're also gonna to have to pull the module out and have it reprogrammed, because it, on the Lexuses they lock when the airbags go off. So we'll send that out. I actually found a pretty cheap airbag. We'll send that module out and we'll have the airbag system back working in this thing for less than $100. Then. We're gonna fix our door. Actually, there is no fixing that door. We're just gonna replace it. Does it really need to be done? Probably not, but it bothers me, so I'm gonna fix it. Haven't decided if I'm gonna fix that quarter yet or not. We'll find out. But then, like I said, we're gonna do some maintenance work. So, let's get to some work instead of talking. Okay, so we're gonna pull the airbag module out, which requires us to take the seats out, the console, and part of the dash apart. So we'll start pulling the seats out, pull little covers off, expose the bolts. Pull the side of the console off. Now we can unbolt the console, not the seats out of the way. Now we're going to do the driver's side seat. Get those scrawny arms out of the way, dude. Unbolt the back of the driver's seat. Tip it forward and pull that cover off the console. Now we can get to those bolts. 
the disconnect the adjusting lever and the wires. That console slides back and forth. So now I'll take the shifter knob off and the bezel around the shifter. And a little trim panel in front of it. And plug everything. Now we can start unbolting this piece around the shifter. I have to open the glove box and take it down partially. There's a couple of bolts behind it. Same thing with the knee bolster on the driver's side. So now we can get to the two screws that are behind it. Then we can pull this piece out, slip it on the other side of the knee bolster, and pull it out of the way. Stick the glove box back up there. Pull the ducts out of there, at least move them a little bit so we can get to the bolts. Now this air duct goes to the center console, so let's slide it out. Get to the bolt that's in there. Yes, the airbag module is in there somewhere. Really not a fun job. There's not a lot of room to work. So we'll unplug the airbag module. I'll we'll pull the duct out of the passenger side so we can get to the bolt on that side. And it's time to get that module out of there. Let's we'll take the shifter out of the way. The cables kind of get in our way. Rather than disconnecting them all, we'll just set the shifter off to the side. Now we got a little room to work in there. I believe this was designed by Houdini, but it's done. Thanks, Toyota. So we'll throw that in the mailbox, send it out, wait for it to be reprogrammed. But in the meantime, we'll change this airbag. Pull the A-pillar trim down and the grab handles. The rear grab handle was already down. I needed it to get a little access in there to test the airbag. The airbag light was on, it had a code. So I checked it, the airbag turned out it was deployed. I actually didn't know until I tested it. They did a pretty good job tucking this one up there. So now we'll pull the quarter panel trim down. Not all the way, just enough to get in there. So we're not going to take the headliner all the way out. We're just going to sneak our hands up there so we can unbolt the airbag. In the pile. Now we're going to unwrap our new airbag. The junkyard put a bunch of saran wrap on there to keep it fresh. You don't want your airbags to spoil. 25 bucks. Pretty good deal if you ask me. So first we'll put the charge assembly in there. Bolt it in. Then we'll plug it in so we don't forget. Because I'm getting old. And now we can run the rest of the bag. We'll tuck it up in there, and then we'll go back and bolt it all in. Count the number of bolts I take out so that I count the number of bolts to go back in and I know I have them all. Tighten them all down. Put our little styrofoam in there. I'm not exactly sure what that does, but the factory put it in, so we'll put it back. It just velcros to the roof. So now we start putting our headliner back up. Throw the grab handles back in, bolt them down. Pop the little covers in there. Now we'll clip the trim in around the sunroof. Put our B pillar trim in. Yeah, I'm not going to worry about that little tear in the headliner. The car's 14 years old with 163,000 miles on it. It's not going to be perfect. Not really worth the extra expense to replace that headliner. It won't hurt anything. Put 
Put the grab handle in the front. I'm gonna put the weather stripping around the door with our weather stripping installation tool. Same thing on the rear door. We can bolt our quarter panel trim up. Put our light in there and all of our covers. Put the sun visor in. Plug it in, tuck the wire up there, and screw it in. Put our covers back on our grab handle. And put our A pillar trim in. Slides into the front of the dash. Put our little retainer clip in. Make sure to make plenty of faces, it's required. And we'll install it with our installation tool. Put our weather stripping back up there. So through the magic of video editing, our airbag module is back already. So now it's time to put it back in here. Found a better way to get it in from the side. So we'll start the bolts. Plug it in. Tighten it all down. We'll put our shifter back up. Put our duct in for our console. This would be much easier without the carpet in there, but taking the carpet out of this car is not a fun job. So, just kind of worked around it. I'll put the rest of the ductwork in. Clip it together. And plug in all of our wires. Now we can tighten up our shifter. And install the bottom of the dash here. out of there. Go around the glove box, go around the knee bolster, and clip it into the dash. Now we can screw it all in. Now we put our heated seat switches in, clip them in, clip the bezel in, screw the shifter knob back on. Now push the glove box back into place, put the screws in it. One bolt in the bottom. Now we're ready to put the console back in. So we'll put the base in, plug it in. There's a cigarette lighter adapter down there. I'll screw the base down. And we'll set the console in. Plug it in. There's another cigarette lighter inside. Set it down into place. Clip in the adjustment lever. bolt it in. Make sure it works. I'm sure there's a lot of people that didn't even know these were adjustable. I just learned myself. We're gonna make the clean freaks happy. We'll vacuum all this out of here. Lots of little treasures. I think I found like 60 cents. We're going all out. We're gonna clean this stain off the carpeting. Spray a little carpet cleaner on there. Scrub it down a little bit. 
wipe off the excess. And vacuum it out. Not sure what I paid the detailer for if I'm doing his job. But, gotta make the clean freaks happy. So we'll throw the seat back in. No, I'm not doing the whole carpet. The detailer has to have something to do. I'll plug in all the wires. Bolt it down. Installed little covers. Bolt the back of it down. Install those covers. It'll look more cleaning. Seriously, leave some for the detail guy. Now I'm going to throw the driver's seat back in. Plug it all in. And bolt it down. Put our covers back on. More cleaning. Does this guy ever quit? Not sure why I decided to do this. I'm gonna have to work on the engine. It was pretty dirty. So, decided to rinse it down. Maybe I did it to destroy all those myths that you can't wash the engine of your car. And a little water isn't gonna hurt it. Unless it happens to be a Ford. No, I'm not picking on Ford, so don't get all sensitive on me. It's just that every time water touches a Ford engine, you end up with a bad coil. Or three, or six. So this is the kind of work they always warn you about with rebuilds and how they say every rebuild is. The door is all collapsed here. And this is just a big chunk of Bondo. Funny part is, this was done with a clear title and no mention of this accident on the history report. Video should be sponsored by Bondo. So there's no grinding this out and fixing this. It needs a door. It didn't even mix the Bondo up right, it's still soft. So we're gonna replace the door. But when we're done, the car should be a few pounds lighter. So we got our used door. We're gonna throw it on here and see just how bad our body lines and door gaps really are. And while it's up here, we'll be able to power up the window, make our life a little easier when we're stripping the door down. We'll tear this weather stripping off to get it out of our way because it's annoying us. And then we can unplug the door. And pull a little cap off the door check and unbolt the door check. We'll unbolt it from the door, drop it down inside. Get those wires out of the way so we can close the door. And we'll unbolt the door from the hinge. I don't want to take the hinges off the pillar because they're actually seam sealed on there and I don't want to have to repaint them. So now we can pull the door off in the pile. Now we'll take the hinges off of our used door. I still might end up needing those hinges, but if I can get it on there and lined up without having to disturb that seam sealer and paint the B pillar, that'd be great. So we'll latch the door. Try not to scratch anything. So we got it on the first latch, enough to get our bolts and our hinges. Tighten them up. And that is not a good looking gap. Door's got quite a bit of tension on it. Gonna need some adjusting. 
move the wires so I don't smash them. And that gap looks horrible. It's a little wide up at the top, a little tight at the bottom, and the door is too far in. Got a little bondo to adjust here. Okay, a lot of bondo. Where's the metal? I was not expecting all this. Bondo right over the paint. Lots of it. It just gets worse. Okay, I think we got enough out, we can close the door. So after a little adjustment to the hinges with our hinge adjusting tool, and a little adjustment to our body lines with our Bondo removal tool, we got a door that closes pretty good. We got some nice gaps. So, now it's just time to fix that. And by fix, I mean take everything out of it. Could have at least put a little hardener in there. It was at this point I decided this is not worth saving. There was no end in sight to this Bondo. It appears there was a hole torn in it from the original accident and this piece was folded over. So I kind of pulled it into place a little bit, but now it's time to replace it. The longer I work on it, the worse it gets. This is actually duct tape. They bondoed over duct tape. These guys took every rule of bodywork, broke every one of them, made up some new ones, and then broke those. So I thought this would be a nice quick job. Worst case scenario, I'd have to rework the bondo to get the door gaps to fit right. However, I did not know I was up against the biggest hacks in the country. So we're gonna need to replace this dog leg. At first I thought maybe I could piece it in, but it's just too gone, full of rust, bondo, tiger hair, and everything else. Even some duct tape. Not sure what they were up to. Anyway, to do it right, we're just gonna to replace that little section down there. Not a huge job, but I still gotta get parts. Either a whole quarter or just the dog leg. So we'll put this thing on hold for a little bit. So like this video if you found it interesting, share it if you think somebody else might. Subscribe to see what else I'm working on, or the rest of this build. As always, thanks for watching, and I'll see you soon.